Hi everybody. So last time we studied the angle measures found in several different kinds of polygons. That's a little bit deceptive since chapter 6 is mostly about one specific type of polygon, a four-sided polygon called a quadrilateral. Today we're going to talk about a certain kind of quadrilateral that has many special properties so we can do all sorts of interesting things with it. And that special kind of quadrilateral is a parallelogram. As you might guess from its name, parallelograms are related to parallel lines. In particular, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Now you'll note that I called it a quadrilateral and not a rectangle or a square, as you're probably used to calling four-sided shapes. The reason is, as we'll see next class, that squares and rectangles have their own special properties and definitions. So for now, we're just going to deal with four-sided shapes and call them quadrilaterals or parallelograms. Now, the opposite sides and opposite angles of parallelograms have special properties, so it's important for us to be able to tell what those are. Same with consecutive sides and angles. And a picture is worth a thousand words, so I'll just leave these pictures here to explain. Now, as I mentioned, parallelograms have many special properties. Most of them come from the fact that they are made of parallel lines. Those properties are that their opposite sides are congruent, that their opposite angles are congruent, and that their consecutive angles add up to 180 degrees. We'll mostly use these for algebra. So, keeping these properties in mind, let's look at this diagram and try to figure out the measure of angle A. Before I talk about what A turned out to be, try and figure out what D turns out to be. So, the key for both of these problems is that we have this 127 degree angle here in angle B. To find A, we want to identify that angle A and angle B are consecutive angles. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. Since we know angle B is 127, we can solve for angle A. For angle D, we'll instead observe that D and B are opposite angles. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. So that means that they are both 127 degrees. So we've used both theorems about angles. How about some sides? Looking at the sides of this parallelogram, let's try and find the value for x and what that means for the length of AB. Well, we have some information 
about segment AB and segment C, uh, CD. We know that they're equal because they are opposite sides. So we can set this up into what's hopefully some pretty simple algebra. And then, in order to find the measure of AB, we'll just take that information and plug it in. And so we'll find that AB is equal to 7. Right. We'll also use these for some proofs. Now, what is always the first step for a proof? That's right. We're going to state the given. Now, one thing I want to say about one of these givens, here we've got this looks like a drawing of a parallelogram, and it is. Just like when we draw a picture of a triangle in front of a name, we're saying the word triangle, so too can we say parallelogram by drawing a little parallelogram. This means that all of these special properties and any other properties of parallel lines will be available to us. Now let's see here. What do we need to prove? Well, we need to prove that angle BCD is congruent to angle CMD. That's these two angles. Hmm. Well, that might look a little bit daunting, but there's a clue here. We know that AK is equal to MK. Given that information, what kind of triangle is AKM. That's right. AKM is isosceles. And that means that these two angles will be equal because of the isosceles triangle theorem that we learned back in section 4.6. Now, it's fine to call it angle A, but I'm actually going to call angle M here CMD, since that's what we want to prove something about. Well, now we've got angle A related to CMD. We need to get angle BCD involved here somehow, and that's where this parallelogram comes into play. We've got A, B, C, D here. Well, A and C are opposite angles. And I can call that angle C B, C, D. Opposite angles of parallelograms are congruent. So, we're all set. This is the last step. We know that angle A is equal to angle BCD, and angle A is also equal to CMD. From that, we can say that angle BCD is congruent to angle CMD. What 
property justifies that. That's right, my favorite, the transitive property. If you said substitution, that's okay too. If you didn't get either of those, well, that's all right. We'll do some more practice. All right. There are some other proofs we can do, but we'll save this one for next time, since I want to talk about diagonals before we finish. This being the fourth special property of parallelograms. Now, what's a diagonal? Well, the word diagonal, you usually think about a slanted line. And it turns out that diagonals are segments that connect the vertices of polygons. We haven't seen these too much before because you can't actually draw them in a triangle. But we'll be seeing a lot of them from now on. And the special property that the diagonals of a parallelogram have is that they bisect each other. So if we are told that this is an 8, then that means this segment also has to be 8. Let's use that idea to solve for x and y in this problem over here. Now I'm trying to turn that into a 12 so that this will be a easier to handle problem. So just trust me that there should be a 12 there. And give that a try. Find x and y. Now, one of our setups will be that y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. Now, that we can't solve by itself because it has two different variables. But 12 equals y plus 2 is something that we can solve. So we find that y equals 10. Substitute that in. We'll be able to solve this pretty handily. And there we go. So these are the sorts of problems that we'll have on our practice assignment, which you'll find on Schoology. And I'll see you next week.